are listening to the Fuerte Network. Welcome back. It's the Diva Dad Show. Hello. Hello. Hi. And welcome back. You got the whole family with you tonight. Viana, Gavin, and I. And thank you for being here nope. on the Diva Dad Show. Yeah, sure. <laughs> thank you, guys. So we took a little break. Mm-hmm. We took a little break for uh, the month of September. And we're coming back here on this fifth day of October. We are so happy to be back. It's been nice, though, taking a little break, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a nice time to uh, unwind and detach. And I really did. I took a break from um, Ro really being on social media and stuff. I mean, I was on there a little bit just to kind of check in, but not really posting too much or doing too much. I did a lot of resting. We did some some fun stuff, too. What was one? Oh, <laughs> what was something that we did? Um. OK, we went to California. Yeah, yeah. that was amazing. Yep, it was awesome. We, it was our first time as a family taking a little vacation mm-hmm. and getting out of the state like that. So I surprised the kids with a trip to Venice Beach for the weekend, which was really cool. I had it worked out and the surprise, um, we pulled it off. It was beautiful. Like they had no idea what was going on all the way up to the very end where we were driving to school in the morning. And then instead of going to school, I just kept going and went to my buddy's house who lives by their school a couple blocks away. We pulled up to his house and they were like, well, what's going on? And I was like, surprise, we're not going to school today. We're going to California. <laughs> and they were like, what? I was like, yep, we're going to California. So it was awesome though. It was great because it was something that I've always wanted to do. And, you know, life happens sometimes and things get interrupted and plans get pushed off and things, you know, happen. So luckily, though, I was able to finally pull it off with my friend's help. He helped me pull off this huge surprise. I had a lot of support and friends help me with that. And Jude was a great help with that, too, to keep the surprise going and everything. So it was amazing the way that it all worked out. And the kids were surprised. Mm-hmm. It was a lot yeah. of fun. It was scary, though. What? Why was oh, it yeah, the scary? Waves. People? No, the waves. No, I meant the people. The people. Well, some of the people were scary, but the waves. Yeah. I mean, it was crazy because we went to Venice Beach. And so we were planning it. I wasn't really thinking about it too much. And then when we got there, I was like, oh, yeah, we brought the kids to Venice Beach. Like, <laughs> this is going to be a very eye-opening experience for everybody. And very interesting. So I didn't know exactly where we were staying because when I was planning the trip with my buddy, he was helping me with a lot of it. And so uh, we had found one place and then he was like, I'm going to find another place and it's going to be better. And I was like, all right, cool. And he did. He found a place and it was right on the boardwalk. So we stayed right on Venice and Rose Boulevard or Rose Lane, Rose Road, something like that. It was Rose. And we were like, you know, stepping right to the beach right there. And we had access to everything. It was awesome. We were, you know, a couple miles away from Santa Monica. We went there for the day and hung out on the pier, went, um, well, not for the day. We went there at night and had for an hour time and to then do got anything. Out. Well, we did. No, we were back and forth because we went there in the daytime and hung out at the in the ocean. And then we had lunch on the pier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we came back and then we went to the ocean down by us, which was more around Venice. And then we went back at night. So I had planned to take them back at night because they have this little amusement park on the pier. And there's like a roller coaster and a Ferris wheel and a couple of other rides. Correct. So I was like, all right, awesome. Let's do this. So I looked it up and it said that the pier closed at 10 p.m. The amusement park and everything said they closed at 10 p.m. So I was like, perfect. We'll get there at 8. We'll have a couple of hours to make the rides and hang out. So we got there at like 8.45 because we ended up having to walk. Because the plan was we were going to take like those little um, rent-a-scooters or bikes or something, right? Because we were like, yeah, we'll cruise up the boardwalk on the scooters or bikes. It'll be great. It's at night. It was cool. No. 
<laughs> wrong. The universe said, time out, you get to walk again. Because we hadn't walked enough that day. We were averaging like seven and a half to 10 miles a day walking back and forth on the beach and stuff. <laughs> we walked so much. Yeah, I, it was I so. I should have got a step counter up. <laughs> no, Chris had a step counter on. That's how I know how much Chris we walked every day. And so we're on our way, right? We're trying to find scooters and bikes to rent and buy and stuff. And none on of the them. Street would work they were either out of order out of area they were disabled they were needed maintenance something was wrong all and of we them needed maintenance all of them needed maintenance it was the worst timing so we ended up not doing that we ditched that idea ended up having to walk back to santa monica pier again and so that took an extra like 30 minutes because we were beat it was the end of the day so anyways we get there just in time to experience one ride because i didn't realize the boardwalk or the pier closes at 10 but they shut everything down at nine because it takes an hour for them to clear it off and they want that place cleared out by 10 p.m i didn't know the rules it was our first time we were brand new so uh anyways i get there we were able to ride one ride so she was like well, what do you want to ride and i was like well definitely the giant um, Ferris wheel, right? Because it's like right on the pier. It overlooks the ocean. It's like the biggest thing. It's got views it and everything. <laughs> I, hated it. I, hated I didn't realize yeah. how affected they were by heights and they were terrified. Like we're all over the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> exactly. And like dangling 50 <laughs> feet in the air and it was making creaking noises and swaying back and forth. And you okay, that is one fun. thing. That is one thing. I was I I it was a little freaky when it was making the creaky noises. <laughs> yes, and then you saw the waves hit as you stopped you and were suspended for a while. You were like, having the time oh, of the your waves. waves were crashing because it was windy that night. It was really windy, and so that's why Stop. our balloon Ferris wheel cart thingamajigger was rocking so much. And then we got in, we ended up being on there for like an extra rotation too, because we were supposed to get Two off. Rotations. And it felt like we were gonna get off. And then all of a sudden, boom, we went back up. And when we were up, we were like stuck at the very top for a while. I didn't like it. Yeah, I mean, it's open and stuff. I I thought it was great because I loved You were having time. the best time. Well, of course I was. I like, thought you guys you were too. You guys were all like, yeah, roller coasters. No, we were not. We were laying down no, we like stuck in the seat trying not to <laughs> fall. We didn't get to go on the roller coaster. We went on the Ferris wheel. Well, now I'm not taking you on a roller coaster. You can't handle a Ferris wheel. You don't go on a roller coaster. You, know you don't what? get upgraded to roller coaster if you can't handle a, a Ferris wheel. You don't it's put a roller coaster Ferris on a wooden wheel. It literally goes like this. It's a wheel. Like hamsters do it, old people do it, babies do it, <laughs> everyone do enjoys it. it. And then anyway, so I thought I was like, oh, you know, we'll do the easy ride and stuff. Cause I was like, the roller coaster would be cool and fun, but I wanted to do something that was gonna be like fun and enjoyable for the whole family. Like I thought we were gonna take pictures, you know, up there no. and selfies and just have fun. I moved and they were like, what are you doing? <laughs> Gonna, it's gonna collapse. <laughs> it was scary. <laughs> I sat back in my chair and it moved, and they were like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "Okay." And get, and then you're like, "Do you want me to move to Gavin?" And I was like, "No." <laughs> I was having the best time because it was amazing. And yeah, we were over the ocean. It was dark, but it was a lot of fun. It was a lot no. of fun. The rest of the time, we were uh, trying not to die in the ocean. The undertow was Hug. a real thing. Uh, that pulled us each out to the ocean and threw us out to the waves like we were little rag dolls. I lost my glasses. I kept getting dragged. Out. That was Catch. really funny. He wore his glasses into the ocean for. So I reason. wasn't even in the ocean. I was like up to my like knees, thighs, right. I wasn't even gonna go in the ocean. I had my sunglasses on and I turned around and the ocean said no. And it like slapped me in the back of the head with the wave. And when it did that, it was just enough to rip my glasses off. I saw them fly and I tried to go for them and then boom, I was, that was it. So you're making it sound so tragic. You had no idea where they went. It was. I looked them dead in the eyes. I reached out. I reached them calling. I tried to reach for them. But I, I did. And Titanic. then as they went into the water and I reached for them, the undertow took out. They were victim to the undertow. You should have waited, waited till they came back, you realize. Well, you know what? I should not have gone out there with my sunglasses, but, but I wasn't even in it. the ocean for that long or i wasn't even in there very much it was just i'd barely gone in there like i wasn't even very deep like knees maybe that is true then a giant wave did come but still yeah the waves are crazy like we got there on oh, a friday the last day yeah it was terrifying it was it was crazy like friday night we got or friday late afternoon we got there we got in the ocean and it was freezing 
The water was freezing Friday. It's actually as cold as I was expecting. I was it frozen. Was and then Saturday when we went back to the beach, the water was a little warmer, which was nice because then you could tolerate being in there longer like me and you didn't you know, feel like you were going to die of hyperthermia. <laughs> My fingers got very numb. Yeah, but the sand was warm and it was hot. It was like, what was it, 91, I think it got up to on Saturday. So it was like the perfect time to be at the beach. And for our first time, it was a successful family vacation. Like uh, no one got sick. Uh, no one got in a fight. Nobody I cried I got that I think of. <laughs> I didn't yeah. cry. I don't think anybody cried. Um, and we went with a friend of ours and his dog and the five of us survived and made it. And we were in a one bedroom. Two bedroom. Yeah, it ended up being like a two bedroom because they had like a separate extra spare room um, that he was able to go into and hide. And then we took over the main room and stuff. But yeah, we weren't really in the room at all. It was mainly just to sleep. And that was it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we were on the beach, on the boardwalk, walking up and down. Looking at all the interesting people at Venice Beach, there were so There was many. so much, all the shops. Were weird. Yeah, so many shops. Everything was weird. All the head shops everywhere. So much marijuana. Mar 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 exactly. <laughs> I don't know why I tried to say it like that. <coughs> mar what was the one comment you said? Hmm? He was like, everyone here is so nice and high. <laughs> Because they were. There was seriously a okay, shop on every single street corner. Every shop had the Neojuana logo on Stop. it. <laughs> that, that's my word. Um, there was, was like, was, yeah, like every corner. So though. the last time I went to California, things were a little different. I didn't realize how legal. liberal it is in California now with the legalization of marijuana and it being rec and it being the way that it is in California. It's seriously, they sell it on, I mean, there was a, sh there was, they're right. There were head shop. There were head shops at the or dispensaries on the corner, basically of every block, selling yeah. everything right there. It was like Circle K. You just walk in there, you get your stuff, and then you just walk out, and it was fine. I wouldn't have been surprised if you could have bought it at every shop there. Yeah, I wasn't either. And on one night, I remember there was like street vendors selling their own stuff. It was like this one's my own grown stuff that they had like rolled and everything. And I was like. That's interesting. Thank you, but no, thank you. I'm, I'm good. Thank you. We're on our way to dinner. Yes. These I are know. As of like five like, of us were walking as a family. <laughs> Dig. No. I'm like, yeah, welcome to Venice Beach, everybody. This is, this is where we brought the kids. <laughs> Very fun family vacation. It was a lot was. of fun, but it was also really scary walking to the pier. Especially at yeah. night. Oh, yeah. That was the other thing. We walked there at night, and I didn't know that the boardwalk changes at night. Homeless. That much. <laughs> and it basically becomes shantytown for the homeless people. That's where they set up. <clears throat> and literally, they line up the sidewalks with their tents. And I didn't realize that. And so it, as it got later, because we started our voyage at like 8 p.m. So like by 8.30, you know, the beach is cleared out. Everyone's gone home. And they really start to set up camp. And so there was one point that we walked through like one of their camps being built around us. And it was like, oh, run, kids. We got to get out of here because we're in their turf. And at that point, it's like we are kind of trespassing on their territory. So I didn't want to have any problems or anything our first time in Kelly with the kids getting shanked. So <laughs> I didn't we want decide, to be shanked that day. No, nobody wanted to be shanked. Not today. We said not today. <laughs> So we decided to mind our business and walk a little faster and get there. But we made it safe and then we ended up uh, bringing an Uber home. Oh, that was the other thing, right? So we couldn't get a scooter or bicycle to work or anything. So I saw one of those little street bicyclists, you know, that have the little wagon behind them you and stuff. You should have bought it. No. no. And they're like, oh, we can totally drive you up to Santa Monica Pier. Just hop in my wagon and I'll give you a bike ride. Yay. And I was like, all right, cool. You know what? I'll do this. So. I was like, how much is it to get from here to Santa Monica? How much was it? Was it was thirty dollars. Thirty. And he said, I'll bring it down to twenty nine. No, no, it was forty. Uh -huh. It was forty and he brought it down to thirty. And That's I said, I No, thank you, sir. We'll continue walking. Because that was ridiculous. Even the Uber ride that we ended up bringing back to the hotel we were staying at was only fifteen dollars. And I was way about that. I was like, Yes, I will take an Uber rather than risking my life again and having to walk that 45 minute walk home. Cause at that point- <laughs> Getting shanked by the homeless. Right, I don't want to get shanked this time. Cause we got souvenirs with us, you know, we're targets at this point. We had money. Right, you know. And our funnel cake. Hey, oh yeah, and our funnel oh, yeah, cake. Oh yeah, funnel cake. That funnel it cake, I know. That was a really good funnel cake. One thing though about food on the boardwalk in Venice or on the pier was expensive. 
Like we spent twenty dollars on cheeseburgers on the boardwalk. And it wasn't anything crazy good. It wasn't like it was gourmet. We had fancy service. It was like what you got at the fair. It was like twenty dollars for a burger and at least it was burger and fries and drink, but still that was expensive. The fries were good. The fries were good. But it was well worth it because we got to go on a trip and we got to experience the ocean together as a family. And that was a lot of fun. Um, battling the waves together and watching the kids do that. That was really cool because I haven't seen that before. So that was fun. We hang out at the pool a lot. We swim a lot at our um, place like year round. The kids are in the pool literally year round. They we will swim. December. Yep. They'll swim in December. They'll swim in January. Oh, so They've been in there in February, March. It doesn't matter. They've been in there every month of the, of the year. I don't think there's one month you haven't been in. Yeah. No. June. Because even when it gets cold, if June there's like summer. that one warm day yeah. and the sun's out and stuff, they'll <laughs> go to the pool and they'll jump in there and stuff. I'll go sit in the hot tub because I don't, don't mind that. I the pool as but much as we do. I don't mind the pool. My body just can't tolerate the cold like it used to and like you guys do. Like when I get super cold like that, my bones and joints get cold and it takes a lot for me to thaw out and it hurts. And you die. Yes. And so I know better than to do that as much as I want to because it's fun. I used to be in the polar bear cupboard, but in Alaska, like I've joined, I've jumped in frozen glacier water before and stuff like in the winter time in ne wearing no clothes. Like it's crazy. You're like everything goes dark and you go deaf <laughs> and blind at the same time. And you're like, am I alive? And then you're like, I hope I am because I'm underwater. <laughs> And then you remember how to swim because everything freezes. It's crazy. But yeah, I would be doing that, but I can't anymore because of what's going on. But the, yeah, they jump in the pool all the time. So I've seen them swim. And this was a whole different experience doing the pool or doing the ocean, experiencing the ocean and battling that. So we did it. We had a good time. And then we came back, back to school. And that's when I started school again, which is a whole new experience for all of us. I, I'm going back to college for a year to take some courses and get a sort of certificate in paralegal studies, cha cha cha, which is awesome because I work for an awesome attorney and an amazing firm. And so I had the opportunity to um, pursue this and become a paralegal for the firm and work. And I'm like, yeah, why not? I'm going to be there doing stuff anyway. So be a little bit more useful and beneficial for everybody. And I get to do a little bit more work, a different type of work, which is really cool. Like the more I'm learning about it and um, practicing, the more that I am enjoying it. Like it's actually a lot of fun practicing law and doing that. Like being able to be part of the team, like not that I get to do practice, but you know what I mean? Get to be part of a team that's um, providing these the service to the people and stuff like that. And just learning the different laws and everything that are out there and, um, how it's relevant to the world right now because we deal with employment law and there's a lot of issues coming out right now about the mandates and about the vaccines and about this and that and about all these people and my rights my rights and it's like just get the vaccine all the rights right you know what your right is your right is to protect the, your fellow human being and get vaccinated correct and protect yourself yeah and protect yourself and if you're protecting yourself, you're protecting others in this scenario. This is one of those things. That's why we wear our masks to protect others. And hopefully they're wearing their masks to protect us. Same reason why we decided as families and individuals to be vaccinated ourselves, because we are. And our youngest member of the family, Viana, is only 10, but she is now, I believe, eligible for the vaccine. I think they're releasing it. So I'm in touch with her doctor's office, just trying to make that happen too for her, because again, she wants to be safe and she wants to be as prepared and protected as possible. And if that means another shot, which how do you feel about shots? No, exactly. But even her will do this because it's worth it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> it is. It is. It totally is. And so uh, there's a lot of controversy going on with that right now. And just a lot of things in general with a lot of um, truth coming to surface as far as, you know, workplace discrimination and people who have dealt with, you know, hostile work environments and um, being discriminated against, whether it's uh, racial discrimination or um, disability or sexual or whatever it is. A lot of people have dealt with it for so long because it felt like for a lot of us 
the way that we were kind of programmed here was, you know, it was just part of the society of the workplace. It was just part of what you dealt with kind of thing. And now it's not. And it's kind of nice to be in this work environment where we're kind of working to change that kind of thing, you know, where it's like, nope, we have rights. And as humans, we need to stand together to uphold these rights and make sure that they're being spoken for and stuff. So kind of reason why we do things like what we do together too. And as a family, we've done some small things that go to see different see protest things like that, you know, and become part and active ourselves. I mean, even V was part of a protest on school campus. Oh, yeah, my school did a protest. It um, was the cutest thing. Yeah, because um, the school changed cohorts um, for some reason. Um, and a bunch of kids like rioted and started a protest. So there's a protest going on in my school. It's still kind of going on, but like not really. Okay. Anymore. It's kind of like a, it's just, a peaceful resistance. Yeah, like they kind of knew they weren't gonna really get it. So yeah, like um, one of the days, like there was a giant crowd of people in fifth grade, I think in sixth too. Um, mm -hmm. We had six change cohorts as well, just like going through campus mm. um yeah it was pretty neat to hear about them and see how they organized and came together for this they so what happened on their campus was they mixed up the school schedules of certain grades once they received all of their test scores from their previous um, schools and everything and it was just a mix a mix up of um to align them in a way that they're learn the way that they're learning so they grouped them according to how they learn best is the way that the school explained it kind of. So when this happened though, it disrupted the kids schedule that they were getting used to and the friends that they were interacting with and going through their daily schedule with. I lost all of them. Yeah, all of them. And so as a result, the kids organized and came together and they were like, no, we don't feel this is right. This is an infringement. And so they protested and it was cute. It was like, well, that's awesome that you guys are finding a cause and a reason or something like that. And you're believing in something and you're not, you know, just going with whatever and stuff that's kind of cool to just see that so it's nice to see this generation with minds because i have seen teenagers who are older than you and young adults who don't seem to have a mind or a common sense or really self like a self identity or self-knowledge kind of thing you know mm -hmm. like you guys have a pretty good understanding of who you are and what you kind of like and what you want to do kind of thing. And even if it's rough and it um, isn't always easy being that person, it's who you guys are. It's kind of cool um, watching that and seeing how you guys are growing into that. So it's really neat to experience and see that. And um, I don't know, I got to think about a lot of that kind of stuff and see it for a minute while I took my break from some stuff because I didn't just take a break from the podcast and from um, recording the show. I took a break from baking too, kind of from providing for the wholesale accounts. I was, um, was so sad. Yeah, a lot of things was, shifted and changed um, in our lives over the past couple of weeks and months. And so there was so much uncertainty for a minute and stuff that I really couldn't provide the type of service and product that I know that I can provide and stuff. And for me, there's no option of doing something half-assed if you're gonna be doing it like that. So rather than put out a subpar product, product or not be able to be reliable and, and um, productive in that matter, I was like, nope, I need to do this and take a break and refocus, restructure kind of thing. And it's been nice. It's allowed me to, you know, focus on school for right now, focus on you guys, which has been nice. Like we got to take that vacation. We got to do things that I wouldn't have time to had I been so consumed with the tighter schedule of things. So coming back into this fall season and stuff, um, the Diva Dad show is coming back. So we'll be back every Thursday night for the next uh, couple of months at 7 p.m. So stay tuned. We appreciate you watching us and supporting us. The show's growing, the Facebook is growing. So continue to tell your friends about it and stay tuned and watch the past episodes and just kind of see how we're growing. Uh, this next season that we're coming out with, we do have a different kind of um, 
structure to the show. Well, because we kind of have a little structure this season. <laughs> last, se last season was just, we're just going to show up and just do it and stuff. But we're just kind of like, oh, we got to go do the podcast. Exactly. Oh, okay. It's like, oh, shit, it's Thursday again. Let's go. <laughs> we, let's go. We got to go. We got to go. <laughs> like, wrap it up, kids. You got to go. Get in the car. Pack up some baked goods and yeah. let's hit the road. We got to make some tea and go. So, tea. but this, uh, this season, we're going to be doing some different highlights and segments and stuff. I will be highlighting more small businesses here in town. So I'll be having a couple different guests on throughout the next couple of weeks who will be sharing their small businesses and what they do and what kind of services and products they provide here in Phoenix, um, throughout the Valley and throughout Arizona. And some of them are even national or international. Um, we'll be doing a, we'll be doing one segment just on cooking and baking. So we'll do a show and bring out and talk about a recipe and it'll be something that I'll share with the viewers and everything and post it on um, the website through the blog. And I'll have my assistants here and other people who are coming on the show to help me um, bake and to kind of just inter interact in a way that we do like at home when we bake and we cook. It's not always just a solo activity or chore you know sometimes it's fun and we make a whole thing about it we've even gone over to other people's or friends houses and done the same kind of thing where it's like we like to just kind of hang out in the kitchen and make a thing of it and so it's kind of showing that and talking about the recipes and the products that i um, sell and offer through the diva dad website and through the diva dad um, experiences and classes and stuff so how I mix it into, you know, the yoga classes at the studio and at the space that I'm hosting and outside of that offering um, the services of the Diva Dad through catering and special events and stuff. So I got a couple of those lined up and we'll be sharing that. And then throughout the um, season as well, I'll be having an actual dedication to health and wellness. So highlighting and talking about specific things that I am using in my health regimen to combat and to deal with um, chronic pain and anxiety and depression and a chronic illness and life and everything else. And so kind of going in a more uh, flow. So the next show that we have, we'll start off with the Diva Dad since we're bringing it back for the new season. So it'll be about food. So I'll be on here with some tea and I'll be on here with some food and we'll talk about a recipe and we'll mix it up together and we'll show it off and snack on it. And at the end, I'll share it um, after the show through the website blog. And you can always find um, the relevant events and what we're doing, what we're hosting out in the community through the website. I'm getting the Instagram built up with events and a calendar and stuff. So everything is under the Diva Dad handle. You can find it on Instagram through the Diva Dad. The website is thedivadad.com. And that's where you can order product for now. The vlog and everything will be up and we'll have more content. There's um, two on there right now that you can read. And there'll be more uploaded um, throughout the next couple of months. Holidays are right around the corner too. So I will be sharing some holiday recipes and offering some special holiday packages and stuff. Um, starting with Halloween, I'll have some Halloween packages with like cookies and stuff. And then I'll be setting up for first Friday, November 1st on Roosevelt in between 5th and 7th Street. Selling um, products. Um, baked goods and stuff there. So just stay tuned uh, to the show through Instagram. I know I've been off of there, but that was part of taking the break and part of the whole um, September just chill time. So, but I'll be back um, on social media as much as I can be and can tolerate and fit into my schedule because it's one of those things that you have to do. And I understand that, but I also don't allow it to consume me and my life and take over and stuff because it can easily happen. All right. So please join us next Tuesday for uh, Fuerte Five Beats. It's hosted by Fuerte and they're doing this community based event. It's Fuerte Five Beats. It's the third edition of our community arts healing workshop and virtual space. It's been created to unpack the effects of COVID-19 on our lives and visualize a new tomorrow as a community. This music focused workshop is being led by two musicians, uh, Soraya Dominguez and Dominique Medina. 
You can join La Fuerte Arts Team for an evening of chill beat making as we strive through another day. The meeting is virtual, so please bring a friend or five, tell everyone you know. And the recording of this will be part of a healing soundtrack that will help wash away the ugliness and the caca of the pandemic. So join us next Tuesday, October 12th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Being able to focus on some community events that we're doing and hosting and trying to get more involved in and stuff. So if you have an event or something that you would like to talk about, if you're a small business out there and you want to talk about your products, about an event you have coming up, you can reach out to me through the divadad.com or through Instagram on the Diva Dad and send me a message or send me an email through the website and I'll respond back to you. And then, yeah, I'd love to have more local um, presence and people on here and stuff. And so collaborating with local um, businesses to highlight what you're offering. And it doesn't even have to be, I don't care what it is, what kind of business it is. If you're passionate about it and it's something that you're offering to the community here in Phoenix and you want to blast it out, then reach out to me and stuff. I'm all about that because I like learning about new places and new businesses too. It's something that we do as a family sometimes too. We'll just drive around when we're in different sides of town and find a new spot to go explore mm -hmm. um, and check out and support, right? Like mm -hmm. even when we're hop, um, shopping around like First Fridays and stuff, we like to support local and buy from artisans and vendors and stuff that are out there because especially for us and the kids have seen it they know the hustle of doing a pop-up event it's hard yes. it's hard work <laughs> well we haven't like done it but like we've seen you do it and it yeah hard, so. yeah it's a lot of hard work so and the kids will be on the show as much as they want to be so i'm excited to continue to share this experience with them as well and talk about what they're into and stuff. One thing that V and I are gonna be doing is talking about fashion and beauty. So we'll and be girls. And, and girls. And boys, I mean. We and can boys. gossip about the boys. We can gossip <laughs> about boys and do makeup and how we'll have snacks and tea. I my nails did today. Um, we went and saw Mean Girls on Sunday, October 3rd. So Harkins was doing so a special premiere of it, dude. And these two had never seen Mean Girls. And so was I was at work and <laughs> me, my, me and my coworker, Nancy, I love Nancy. She was like, girl, they're showing Mean shout Girls at Harkins. Nancy. And I was like, all right, shout out to Nancy. For the Mean Girls tickets. <laughs> and she was like, girl, they were playing Mean Girls at Harkins. We got to go. And I was like, all right. So we get on there and we're like looking at tickets and stuff. And then our boss was like, I want to come. And we're like, sweet. So we did it as a team. And so our families all came together on Sunday night. And we met up at Harkins in pink. And we went and watched Mean Girls on the big screen, dude. Like it was their first time me. watching Mean Girls. It was amazing. <laughs> it was so good. I can't wait to repeat everything I hear. I know. I'm going to repeat it to all of my teachers and my school friends. Yeah, I'm going to get lots of calls and be called in. <laughs> lots of meetings about this. Yeah, you go. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? I'm okay with that because... That, it was worth it. It was so worth it. It was worth the experience. And it was... I have loved that movie since... I saw the movie in the theater when it first came out. And so being able to see it in the theater again with my babies was uh, amazing. And being able to share that, especially because he's 13 and she's 10. And we all know the way that 13s and 10 year olds anyways. And I remember when I was 10 and 13, what I was watching and everything like that. So I'm like, this is PG-13. It's just racy Close enough. enough. I, we watch Bob's Burgers. I mean, Mean Girls isn't it's any worse than Bob's to, Burgers. To <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> Mean Girls was so much worse. It, honestly it was, was like, so much worse. Dad, the part where she's so, like, was so though. Good, though. <laughs> the part that you said was your favorite part. <laughs> you say that it's not inappropriate. It was so inappropriate. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but anyways. Yeah, so part of uh, this, <laughs> right? It was so much fun, though. It was so good. I was cracking up. It was hilarious. So um, anyway, so that's why my nails are still pink from that. But Ms. V and I have been exploring and experimenting with makeup and stuff more lately and stuff. So we'll be talking about things like that and sharing our little makeup tips. And I'll also bring up some of, bring on some people too. So yeah, if you're out there in the community and you have a makeup business and you're into doing that kind of stuff, please come on the Diva Dad show and do a makeover. Let's do it. Let's be fam and glam because I need to figure out how to do makeup that you can see on me. Cause I don't know if you can tell, but I'm a little bit darker than some people. So on me, it's a little harder. A little bit darker. Just it's a little harder. And I love my pigment. I just want to learn how to do a, 
I don't know, some kind of highlight in my eye that I can see or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But if you got some tips out there for us, I would love it because I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> um, I'm learning as V's learning and stuff. So please, if you have some ha tips for us and you want to help, help your girls out, please reach out because we love it. We will take the help and the advice. We don't mind. We're not above it. We all, oh, we love I? it. So, <laughs> or am I? Dun, 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 dun. So, yeah, so that'll be how the um, the new season of Roll Out. It'll be, have a little bit more structure um, as far as, you know, each week we'll have a different topic um, to go over. And as the weeks go on, they'll rotate and stuff. So you'll see them more than once. So if you miss it, then you'll see the next one. And they're all recorded and archived and stuff, which is amazing that the team, Danny here does this. And it's we're just fortunate and blessed to be in this doing what we're doing right now and stuff. So we're thankful to be back and we're excited for a new season. Anything else? No. No, nothing really. No? No. Nothing no. that I can think of. No. 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 And no. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's pretty much that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I think that does wrap it up for tonight, but it has been great sharing this time with you. And again, thank you guys for being here on the Diva Dad Show with me. Thank you all for listening and thank you for being part of this experience and for tuning in again. And we're excited for a whole new season with you guys. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>